as it kicks out for Williams. Spinning in the lane, Donovan Williams, what a finish. Hanging in the air, nice move. Good look for Donovan Williams. All right, man, say, man, we got Donovan Williams here, a.k.a. Stretch. Say what? Can I restart? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're here with D-Will. I call him D. Why are you all up in the mic like that? Oh, because it sounds better. It sounds really clear. Actually, it sounds great. Like, I listen to it. Do y'all want to hear it? Not really. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> D-Will, Donovan Williams, a.k.a. Stretch, a.k.a. AKA Don, the Don. Don, Don Juan. Pedro Don Juan. Pedro. Don Julio the second. So how did you get the name Stretch? Um, I got the nickname Stretch from uh, my Little League football coach. Um, everybody on our Little League football team basically had like, our coach really can not remember our names. So he, uh, he kind of just gave everybody a nickname. That way he could just remember them. So one guy was fast, so his name was Speedy. One guy was... Hulk, one guy was some some other and then I was just tall and skinny, so he was like, you stretch. You know what I mean? That's that was like my core <laughs> that was like third grade, so that was like my core friend group. So But then how tall were you in third grade? So I was like five six. Must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm five six now. <laughs> I was like five six. Let's speak on that bro, cause well, how tall are you right now? Six six. Okay, how do you view the world? Man, like bro, this. I don't even want to talk about that, bro. I mean, honestly, I view it the same way everybody else do. It's just. <laughs> no, no, you don't. Bro, 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 be looking down on people. Bro, be looking bro. down. <laughs> like, it's different in like crowds. It's different in like, it's only different in like spaces where you're around people and you can see the top, like see above everybody. It's like. Sometimes I be feeling big, but then it's like... Do you feel normal, like, being around other people that are, like, six feet and above? Yeah, but no, nah, it kind of made me... It, it feel weird, though, because, like, then it made me feel short, and I don't, I'm not really used to... And then you feel how we feel. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like my, I, got team, I got friends, teammates, 6'11", 7 foot. I get around them, and it's like... I don't know if I really like this feeling. But like, I'm still tall too. So it's like, I ain't really, I'm not missing nothing. It's just, <laughs> I feel small. So I'm like, damn, I imagine how I feel to <laughs> feel small and actually to, be small. To, to be small. Damn. That's it's tough. Yeah, it's a hard not life. Huh? Not gonna lie. That's tough. But that's where the mouth peak comes You can only in. imagine, huh? You can only imagine. I can only imagine, bro. I mean, sh I mean, shit, I wouldn't. I was like 5'8 for a long time. I thought I was going to be like 5'8. In 8th grade? Yeah, like ninth grade. Bro. Like 5'8 in ninth grade. 5'8 in ninth grade, You're that's like... But shit, I thought I, I thought that's why I was maxing out that I hadn't hit, grew no more. So I was like, shit, I'm going to end up being 5'9. Scouts cart start coming in around 5'10, 5'11. Exactly. But that's what, freshman year, high school. Speaking of, where did you go? You from the age, what part of the Houston are you? Wrong. I'm from all over. Yeah, from all over. <laughs> what do you do like? What do you do for fun? Besides like play ball, what do you like to do? Day in the life. Day in the life. How do you express yourself on daily? You well, to answer your question, I went to Lamar my freshman year. So mm -hmm. I'm from like I'm from inner city. I'm just I'm from the south side. So the southwest side, so yeah. But in terms of just like what I like to do for fun, relax. Like I feel like relaxing is fun to me now. Like I don't know, I I play the game a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Like I play the game. What Warzone? I don't even play Warzone because like I don't even really have a squad for real, so Yeah. He called y'all trash. Yeah, my squad yeah. was trash. I'm cold. I'm not trash. I played with y'all too, so. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm not trash. I don't know who he's calling trash, trash, bro. I played with y'all too last time I played, G, so I don't know. Maybe I'm trash. 
Yeah, that sounds way yeah, better. That sounds sound more realistic. And that's the thing, bro. You might have us on the court, but like when it comes to gaming, that's like bread and butter. I'll bust y'all sure. ass in 2K. Oh, that's different. Wow. Come on, I still are playing a sport game, bro. I'm talking about guns and, and blazing, you know what I'm saying? Bombs I'll, and stuff. I'll, I'll bust y'all ass in, in, in Grand Theft Auto. No. Take no, I, no. I no. hate y'all for everything y'all no. own. Nah. What? Running y'all shit. Bro, while y'all, on, hell, while y'all on the way to bro. deliver some supplies. I love all your cars, bro. Pay for all of them and buy your cars. It's just blow them up for fun. I'll make you, I'll make y'all niggas rage quit for like. <laughs> I don't, bro, I always shoot you with my explosives. Like, like you, bro, you know how like, side. you know how like you get into like that 1v1 battle with somebody in like a main no, lobby. Bro, like, bro you're not going to leave the, the spawn point. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. 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 Tight. All right, we're going to Yeah, we're we can probably run that shit. I have Grand Theft Auto, so. If you don't have Grand Theft Auto, it's been like at least eight years since it's been out. I mean, shit, the new one coming out, so shout out to the new one. 2030? Nah, they said it coming out this year. No, nah, I think they moved it to like 26 or 25. Like, it's not 24 no more. I think so. Nah, they said it was 25. Yeah, exactly. It's the whole time it was supposed to be 25. When it came out, they said 25. Y'all just don't listen. Oh, type shit. Oh, type shit. You just hey, don't listen. It's, it's really been that long, though. Nah, facts. I remember getting Grand Theft Auto, like... Yeah, I remember getting it. Like, I, I remember not being able piece, to get it, man. and then just one day just getting it, like... But, like, do you do you like, even have time to, like, really play when you're on the road, or, like, nah, just when you get back? Nah, we don't really be having that much time on the road. Like, like you play the game, but it's like... You gotta go to sleep, you gotta practice, you gotta shoot around, like... There's just a whole lot of like other things to do when you on the road. So like maybe you play it a little bit before you go to sleep or whatever, but for the most part, you just be chilling. Like mm. you either be chilling or they taking your free time. Like you, they try not to give you too much free time like we do, but then at the same time they be like, all right, come do this optional event that's that's not really optional. Type shit. Type shit. <laughs> Damn. Whenever you go home, like, how does it feel? Like, what's changed? Like, do you feel like there's more pressure? Like, do you feel like a superstar? You yeah, know what I'm saying? Good. Like, how does your life feel after gathering all of these accomplishments? Tight. Honestly, now, personally, I don't know. I feel more at peace now with it because... I feel like after the first year, it's like, all right, you go home and you feel like a superstar. Like everybody go home after their first year. Well, not everybody, but for the most part, you want to go home back to the people that you grew up around and just have that feeling, that sense of accomplishment of doing it, making it. But then, like, after you do it for a while, like, especially where I'm from, like, Houston, like, everything played out, like, so it's hard, it's hard to really come back home and really like, at this point now when I come back home, I just look forward to my people. Like, I can't really have fun outside no more if, if playing with my people, like. Cause it's the same thing, like, what I realized like, that like going out, it really don't matter where you go, like, it's the same vibe everywhere, just people drinking and smoking hookah. It's harder to trust people now, can you separate the two? Like, how do you keep your inner circle? This, from what it is, from it being mixed up and, and all that? No, nah, I don't think, well, for me, it's not hard to trust people. It's easier to realize who to trust and who not to, because, like, like I said, like, once you, go, once you go through it, for the most part, like, you end up, by default, like, taking care of a lot of people who just hanging on just because you want to have, just because you kind of understand. Like, I understood, like, all right, everybody around me ain't making it to the league, but, mm. Shit, I got more than enough to take care of me and the people around me. So, shit, we just gonna have fun. We gonna have a ball. We gonna worry about the rest later. But it's like after you after you go through it long enough, it's like all right, well, that ain't the right way to think because you end up wasting too much money. You know what I'm saying? You end up having people around that. Not even saying like you having people around that ain't supposed to be around, but it's just realistically, it's just people that's around just because like 
they can't afford to do it themselves. Like, they don't necessarily want to go foot the whole section, or they don't necessarily want to go make all the plans. They want to just tag along and hang along because they know you're going to have the most fun. Like, you, you the ball player, so the women going to come around, like, the people going to come around. Like, it, what you doing, like, what they would do on them on, on, by themselves, and like, we just hang with him. Like, it's going to be much fun. It's just going to be much more fun to do what we was going to do if we hang around with him and we save a little money. So, you just like, you realize that for the most part, you end up, like, for the most part, that's your plight. Like, that's the, that's what come with it. But then you just more selective about who you allow to do that. Like, because if you, if you don't check it, then everybody around you will be doing it. Because, like, you realize shit, when you want, when you want to go out, Everybody answers the phone like, hey, hey, I'm on, I'm there, boom, boom. But even with like, even like, regardless, men, women, whatever, on the flip side of it, shit, when you just be chilling and you just trying to kick it and vibe, like you get to the point to where you realize like, either they, people ain't picking up the phone or you be like, shit, I don't necessarily want to hang out with them because they, they vibe and their energy is only good for being outside. The so, motion, the motion's been there for you. Like, would you say that, like? Nah, motion is, is, motion is easy. Like, making it to the, making it to the league never like. I mean, it it helped. Mm. I can't say it didn't because the only thing it did was make it make known. The only thing the league does and being in the league and being a celebrity and being around all of that is just like you just make known what what you really want to hide, like. Most people can hide how much money they make. Athletes can't, because you can look up our contracts. Like, yeah. like, like that's the that's really the yeah. that's really the true fact. Like, it's more fun to go out and act broke. To me, it's more fun to go out and act broke than it is to go out and stunt. Cause like going out and stunt, like everybody gonna just expect you to keep going. Like yeah. once you once you done and you ran out of bottles and you tired of buying bottles, like the people just gonna migrate from your section to go on to somebody else's section who still buying bottles. Like, as long as the club open, people gonna be around. So you just be out and you just be like, damn, like it was like 25 people around, now it's only like seven. Mm. It's like, damn, by the end of the night, like you like, damn, where everybody go? And then you look around the club and it's like, damn, they all dispersed between four or five different sections. But that's just Houston. Like, I can't speak for everybody in every city, but in terms that's of like, Houston. in terms of my perspective on just that, like I would, I would say that, that changed me like it's more fun to just it's more like i say it's more fun to just hang out with my seven mm. than hang out with a like you it's more fun to hang out with a, a real seven than a fake ass 25. like yeah the section full and it's deep yeah. but the energy weird we're not even really having fun because everybody everybody don't even really know each other like you just sitting there and everybody the girls just staring at each other they they feel kind of uptight because they feel like nobody really want to be doing too much because we with the ball players and I don't want to be seen like a groupie. So I'm going to just sit here like very nice and petite and the, the, all the guys just trying to, all the guys just, they got a bunch of people in your section, but you just stand out into the rest of the club. Like that's what you, but the section full, like it looked like y'all having a good time, but realistically, bro, you can cut all that down to seven, seven people that all know each other. Y'all get, Y'all drink, y'all have a good time with each other. Y'all actually like vibing. And y'all got more space. So it feels like it's a better time as opposed to people sitting on top of each other and below each other, shoulder to shoulder. Like, so that's my that's my take on the nightlife now, like in terms of just having, having like success and being in the public line, like, like, it's kind of, it's fake, but it, I mean, it's fun, but you know, you just end up being around a lot of fake energy. So f for yourself, you have to learn how to protect your own, your own energy by setting boundaries. And you lose, like you lose people that, people don't really want to hang out with you as much when you set boundaries. Cause it's like, you ain't as fun no more, but mm -hmm. oh well. It is what it is. Type shit. Type shit. Part of me in the nightlife, bro. You be putting that shit on or what? How does like, how do you express yourself through your fashion? How is fashion, fashion a part of your life? Is that something you look forward to like piece together and shit? I do, and I feel like, 
I feel like the real, the way I express myself through it is just by wearing what I want to wear. Like, I tried using the stylus one time for this one event, and she was good. Shout out Chloe Jackson. She was good. It just was like, <laughs> I was looking, I was like, mm, this really, it's, it's a tough fit. It just don't feel like me, because I like we put a lot of work into it, but like, some of my best, some of my favorite fits are fits that like came together last minute. Like I had like some of my best fits that I've put on is like I had a whole other fit in mind for that day for that event, and then last last minute I put that I put the first fit in, I had on in mind, and it was just like nah. Then I made some tweaks to it, and then I made it I made it change the shirt, or change the pants, or change some combination of the shirts, pants, or shoes, and the top or whatever, and then it made it like damn like that shit hard. So then I was like, I was like, bro, so it was, it was not like, I, I like stylists and I, I respect what they do, but like, for me, it's just like, I just found, I just found that it's better just to wear, like, I think with fashion now, it's like, you, you really have a choice, like, I, I feel like I try to be a little bit of both, like a healthy balance of both, but you either got the uh, option to look good or be comfortable. Because nowadays it's like, I hate people that really like look like I, what I hate about fashion, bro, is I hate when it look like you tried too hard to put it on. Like, oh, if somebody got the same, they just dripped out of bliss yards, but don't have different pieces. They got name brands, but not pieces. And because you see that all the time, like you see people all the time where it's just like, it's just like, yeah, um, I got the Balenciaga, like people go, people go out and they drive a bag in all the designer stores. Like you see them in the gallery all the time, dropping the bag in the designer stores. But realistically, it's like, if it go together, then it go together. But if it don't, don't make it go together just because it's designer. Like just because it's Amiri and just because it's Balenciaga and just because it's Louis, don't make it go together. Like. It's okay to mix in the Louis Vuitton with the Ross jeans. Like, that's how fashion works. Everything don't have to be a fifteen hundred or more. Like, everybody want to be little baby. Like, mm. so you fuck with like underground, like streetwear and shit, and you rock anything that looks cool, bro. <laughs> it's clothes. Like, the same factory that they make Louis Vuitton in, it's a factory right next door to it that make the same clothes for Ross. Same sweatshop. Like. All, it all say made in China, so it's like realistically you paying OD prices. Like I got, I'm a rock Chrome Hearts. I got Chrome Hearts and Versace on right now. It's cool, but like I'm not gonna force it to go together just for the sake of putting a fit together. Like I will literally wear a, a T-shirt from Target, but I throw I throw some Chrome Heart in there, and then I throw some. Like, I throw it in there, but it's like, it's just clothes. I feel like people be like, I want to be wearing a house. Like, it's cool to, I'm wearing a house. Like, I'm wearing a Cardinal, like, I guess, but it's I mean, no more, bro. No more. I, I feel like when you, when you look like, I think the best, like, that's why people like guys like Shay, like in the league, like, it's certain guys that people like because it just look like it's effortless. Like, now people don't like the fits that he wear when it look like he tried, like, when it look like him and his stylist tried to put that fit together, people, some people, most people don't like it because then it looks like a, a fashion week outfit. Like, it's too much for people. Like, people like just everyday, everyday stuff. So how you wear jeans with a shirt, like how you put together, everyday fits, because everybody can't wear runway designer fashion. So I feel like if you could dress. Cozy. Yeah, like if you could Cozy. dress within your budget, like you can dress, like you don't have to for you don't have to break the bank to prove to people that you got money, because people be breaking the bank to buy. Half the time, bro, these designers, I, I laugh, because it's like, bro, they be trolling. Like half these designers be trolling. Like they'll they give you a plain black tee with plain black logo tee. 350. It's just a black tee that say that with the Chanel this gonna emblem fade. on the chest. It's like, gonna fade and shrink. <laughs> it's gonna fade, it's gonna shrink, just like every other t shirt gonna do, but you paid 350 for one one T as opposed to you could have went to Target and got Goodfellow for twenty you could have got a five six pack for 
twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it don't have a Chanel on it, but it's just a black tee. Like, so are you telling? Is your fit based on the name, or is it based on what the or how you put it on? That's where I, that's where my question is when it comes to people fashion. Like, is your did you put it on because of the brand, or did you put it on because of how it looks on you? Because like a black tee, I could wear a plain black tee, and you could wear a black Chanel logo tee. And we can still put the rest of our fit on the same. But if you put a, co a overcoat on, like you put a jacket on or something, you can't even see the Chanel no more. <laughs> so now you paid 350 for a tee that can't nobody, don't nobody even know Chanel. Like, it's just regular. So now it's like, you didn't threw a jacket on. Like what? <laughs> you ain't gonna spill, you, gonna, like, you know what I'm saying? You gonna spill some food on it, you gonna spill some drink on it, like you gonna. <laughs> All right. Speaking of uh, speaking of like a three fifty dollar tee, you know how when you go up and they, they got these celebrity barbers now that charge like three fifty for a cut. Yeah, Is, would you do that type shit? No. <laughs> but but they could braid the fuck out of your shit. You, you, you still know. Here's the uh, thing though. Uh, Here's the or thing they though. on the road with you. They charge well, you three. The thing is, you have to cut and get it braids and your hair done different. Or hairstyle in general. You like gotta you gotta dollars. pay. Here's the thing. You gotta pay for people's time. So like. What I will say is I paid a lot. I ain't never really paid a lot for a cut, but like I've paid a lot for a retwist. And it's different. Like, I'm not gonna let no I'm not gonna let no barber tell like I paid a hundred for for a haircut. Like how like here's the thing, nowadays, and this is why I tell you about about the same thing about the nightlife. Like a cut or edge of like a whole cut, but it's the same thing I tell you about the nightlife. Like once you get to a certain point in life where you can't hide how much money you make, you can't ever act broke. Like, Damn. you can't never ask for a Damn. deal. NBA players can't ask for a deal. You like, well, anything we get, we either got it for free because somebody want to put us on. Like, hey, I want to give you this and I want you to, I want you to promote my brand. Or I want you to promote me. Just show, throw me a shout out. So they want to give it to you for free or you paying OD prices. You never paying market price and you never getting a deal as an NBA player. Like, you not because like, even on a cut, bro, like, he got a hundred. If I he just come cut him at his crib, I know he got a hundred. Like, I don't know what you do for a living, so I don't know if a hundred dollar cut is in your budget. Like, that's but that's business. People gonna look at you and it's like it's just like profiling. Like people gonna look at you and gonna be like, I don't know, like, he don't look like he could pay a pay a hundred for a cut. But if I wanna get a cut off, he look like he could pay like 50, 60. So like nowadays I didn't realize like people just switch their prices up, like hmm. He looked like he got a hundred, so I'ma charge him a hundred. Like, he an NBA player, like, you want me to come cut you at your crib? You want me to come cut you at the hotel? A hundred. Tight. Like, off yeah. real. Yeah. Or you can come to the shop and it's $40. Like, you be like, oh, yeah. yeah. But the shop be like five minutes away, like. And be packed yeah. and you don't, sometimes you don't. be like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just saving you from the client, like from the customers. And you be like, bro, I'd rather just sit there with my headphones on the phone and pay you $40 yeah. and pay yeah. five, ten dollars for the Uber there and back then pay you a hundred to come to the hotel. Like, it's just a, like, you just give me a fade, I get a fade. So I'm paying a hundred for a fade for it. But I've done it before, but like, even with the retwist, like, house calls, people, you know what I'm saying? Like, you now live in a world where people can do house calls. Like, as an athlete, you do like the excessive, people are more inclined to want to, for your like comfortability. So like people are more inclined to do house calls, whereas if you ask like somebody that just work a regular nine to five, you you go ask a barber or a hairstylist, hey, can you come cut me at my crib? They're gonna be like, probably not. But you're yeah. you an athlete or celebrity, oh yeah, I'm gonna come because it's for convenience. Right? Yeah, you paying for convenience. Like they feel exclusive, they feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to come to the shop, so now you kinda putting them on with that. But like so even with a retwist, like most I bro, I had somebody in New York try to charge me like six hundred for a retwist. I said, <laughs> yo, no, listen to this. Listen, no, listen to this. So I got, I was, I was in New York. This is this a recording. I was in New York and I had, I had this girl that I was doing that I did my retwist and she was like, yeah, I charge you two hundred. So then I was like, all right, cool, off rip. Off rip. Like she was like, all right, I charge you two hundred. Like I'm New York big, so she got to drive. Like I know it costs like sixty dollars off, like sixty seventy dollars to get around. So I'm like. All right, cool. So I mean, the reach was really like 121. You know what I'm saying? Make makes sense. Like, and you coming to the house, you're going to watch it drive. I'm paying for the services. Cool. Last minute, she couldn't make it. So I'm like, damn, like, but I needed, I needed my shit done. So she like, let me see if my sister could do it. So she asked her sister, and her sister was like, 
Yeah, my sister said she'll charge you 600. She was like, 200 and then 400 for the travel fee. I said, where is she coming from? Cuba? I said, what you I said, bro, she coming from Jamaica, Jamaica or Jamaica, Queens. <laughs> like, what are you talking? Cause I'm in Long Island, so she like, is she coming from like Jamaica? So I'm like, Jamaica or Jamaica Queens? Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm not gonna pay a four hundred. Like I, I can Uber there and back four times. <laughs> I can even get four hundred. Like, what are you talking about? I get on the subway and go there. Nah, right I pay now. for the Uber on the way. Bro, up, bro, I was. It was so like. This is a funny thing, like people in the service industry don't understand. Like they be That's trying to crazy. throw them prices out because they do that. Like <laughs> they be trying to throw it out there and see, like, oh, he got money, so we gonna see. I stopped messing with her. I stopped messing with the sister and her. Like next, like next, I was like, bro, I, I start getting my hair done by a whole different girl because I'm like, bro, no way you send me to your sister. Thinking I was gonna pay six hundred after you told me two hundred. Like two hundred was already like, damn, like I'm already paying a lot for it, but six hundred. I'm like, y'all playing with me. Mm. The disrespect was real. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll close out, bro. What you got going on in your life now? What you finna do? Like new things you working on? It could be yourself. It could be like projects. Anything. It could be the next goals you got in mind. What investments you got going on? What's something you want to give to me? Man. <laughs> I ain't gonna got some crazy shit all the time happening right now. It's okay, bro. It's, it's JB. <laughs> Y'all gotta see JB. <laughs> Man, honestly, it's, it's gonna sound weird to say, but, bro, I don't have nothing for nobody. Like, hmm. like I feel like everybody already got the wisdom. Like, we had a point. We had a point in time in life where it's like everybody already know what they need to do for their own life. You just gotta do it. Like I can sit here and try to drop a bunch of knowledge that people already got, but shit, they already know it. You can, it's on Instagram. People be on Instagram, TikTok all day, watching reels and watching motivational videos. I watch all the same shit. So it's like either you gonna do it or you not. Like Nike, bro, just do it. Yeah, just Nike, do it. Bro. Like. Or don't, but like, <laughs> if you don't do it, don't complain about how your life is going. Like, if Sorry. however you want your life to go, get up and do it. it or don't, but don't, if you don't. don't do it, don't complain. Don't complain. Mm -hmm. Don't complain. Type shit. Well, shit, as we close out, we'd like to, uh, you know, get you going on a uh, last minute photo shoot if you want to be down. That's just something that we like to do. Man, hell no, I ain't doing nothing. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I'm down, gang. Okay? I'm All down. Right, say we closing out officially. It's been Q to Fame. When we queued up, when we see who's up and coming, we get you on here. Uh, Donovan Williams, aka Stretch, STG. And we out of here, man. <laughs> oh. Damn. Damn.